We've gotten through the semifinals, but now it is finals time here for the Colorado High School Activities Association, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We're excited to be here at Orbital. Well, you got a chance to look at one of these teams that are making it here to the finals, Grandview High School up against Mountain Vista. Now, in that semifinals matchup, Orbital, what did you see about this Grandview team and what do you expect from them? They are individually very competent. This is a squad that I'm actually very scared to face off against, mostly because I am a one-dimensional player. I myself, if I'm playing, I play one character, and that's about it. I'm a little Mac main. I do not have a secondary. I don't have a third character. Apparently, Grandview has about eight. Uh, they <laughs> played eight unique characters across th uh, four different games, which is crazy in its own right. And each match was a 2-0. Now, RJ, the opener for Grandview, did lose theirs. And they lost to, uh, to Kai, who I do believe was one of the stronger members of Fossil. Uh, and so they played Kirby and K. Rule. Still, though, you're looking at Jonathan and Tim. Both of these players came out in exceptionally well in the second and third. And then in fourth, uh, Jonathan pulled out uh, the third and fourth play characters. So overall, Grandview, a wealth of information to kind of pull from. And that's a solid point. I think variety might have went a long way. To have that many characters in your back pocket to <clears throat> counter just about any other character you'd see from the other side is super helpful. But that leads us into to, to Mountain Vista here coming in. And they have similar situation, at least from what we've been able to see. Over the course of the season, these three players have played the likes of eight different characters. So they also bring in some variety. No surprise that after 16 teams come in today, that these are the two left standing. Definitely some great talent across the board. Variety, like we mentioned. And I'm sure Coach Lee feels the same way about his Mountain Vista team. This Vista, uh, Vista Smash Varsity team, very confident, just like we saw from Grandview coming into this Grand Finals. They're um, throwing looks like Pikachu, Bowser with a couple, and a Game & Watch, which will completely uh, change the tides in my eyes. A very chaotic character that I'm excited to watch here, potentially here, Orbital. There's a lot of little bits and pieces with Game & Watch specifically, and it can really screw with uh, just about anyone else. And I say that in the nicest way possible. Uh, there are not many characters that I'll normally say can mess with uh, with someone else to the degree that a Game & Watch can. Reason being is the entire pool itself is very awkward. Um, you take a look at a lot of the uh, attacks that it has. A lot of the smashes have kind of odd hitboxes and, and, and like the whole fundamental kit of Game & Watch just screams joke character, but that's the best part about it. He is. At the same time, if you're trying to predict a lot of what he has, it, it's very difficult to do so. When you're trying to predict the likes of a lot of his uh, attacks, because it's not a, a, a smooth transition from start to finish, it, it's like a stock film piece. You might get lost if you haven't played against the Game & Watch. So I'm very excited to see. We are throwing down here, and it is going to be once again uh, RJ to open things up for Grandview. RJ uh, for Grandview here for Mountain Fiesta. Could be one of two. I mean, Game & Watch is listed first and had the most usage out of hand, but could be Briston as well coming in. So we'll get to the detail. Um, it, it is Penn, oh, we have learned. Penn, nice. Yes, Pen. yes. And coming in first with that Game & Watch. It can be very difficult to play against the Game & Watch. It feels almost uh, cartoonish to some degree. Very good at juggles as well. So if you get above this Game & Watch, even as a floaty character like you have with the Kirby, it can still be very difficult to manage and deal with. I mean, honestly, though, this is a much better start for RJ. When I watched RJ previously, it was very difficult for them to get off the ground, especially against a fast character like a little mech. It can be very difficult to do just about anything. You just feel kind of lost there. Right now, though, you are up about 30%, which is good. However, both these characters are very heavy floaters. And remember, if a Game & Watch hits a 9, you're gone. You are just decimated. But do you actually want to go for that? So right now, uh, Pen just trying to do their best. Another guy comes out, though, and another up smash is great to have this is uh looking a bit better oh very deep go that actually gives a great position for uh pen to try and fight back and pen has been just handling business as usual about even in the percentage uh category but again watch how you get those advantages by stringing together a lot of these combos and right now they're launching this kirby in the air and, uh kirby's oh, did a great, great job to get a counter it yeah that back air was insane able to throw them off the edge pretty quickly 
and that's just the timing factor. Once you get up to about 80 or 90 with both these characters, you're, you're actually just looking for that one quick snap, and that's what gives you the advantage. And then after this, it's playing for the percentage gain. How much percentage do you get before you actually lose your own stock? And honestly, at this point, I give a lot of credit to RJ64 off rip. I think it's a pretty solid number to play with. Now you just got to keep the momentum up. You got triple platforms to work with, and they're inverted, of course. You can play high, you can play mid-low if you want to, or you can play ground game. But right now, you can see Penn is saying, yo, stay up to the top platform. I'm going to try and rack up like chip damage if you will with that pool with that uh wind as well the up airs are so frustrating to play up air and up smash with gabe and watch it is, spells a very very difficult game to try to get around like i mentioned kirby not very quick as far as getting back down to the ground that being said they do have the stone to get back down so you can kind of change up the paces and i think that they've been doing a really good job of just that but uh, be able to handle it too the last place you want to live if you're a kirby at this point is high percentages there's just so many different avenues that the game and watch can uh find a kill confirm it uh right now at the 114 but that kid has been super dead even between these two regardless oh, oh that was cheeky that was cheeky uh <laughs> I love the fact that we haven't actually seen uh, the inhale before uh, too much, and, and I do respect the fact that RJ is not going for it as much. However, that is a cheese factor that you can pull out if you get this last stock. If you go for that inhale and just the uh, annoying factor with that smashing hour stock up, you can't actually do that if you so wish. This is a best of three. Keep that in mind. Yeah, exactly. Kirby on it. Not exactly the best. Oh, what a smash down. So it dunked a couple of ways, both ways. But the Kirby packs a very heavy punch for how light of a character from a floating standpoint that Kirby is. And I, I think they've been doing a great job to change the pace and be able to get back to it. But both of these players have had answers as well. But look at the Game & Watch uh, pull up more and more damage. Just trying to get around it, but there's no avenue away from it. It's just so difficult to manage. If you get above a Game & Watch, good luck. You are just going to float to keep them coming. I would be very frustrated. That's another one. Are you going to lift them off the stage? You're trying your hardest, and that's going to work so well. 22 to 116. Keep in mind, it was Penn to actually lose their second stock first. So I am loving this. A little bit of a roll in, but an upbeat to go ahead and keep yourself in the right spot. Fishbowl comes out, and now you're going to keep them on that lead. Inhale to try and trade things out as much as possible. I don't think it's going to work. Bombs are out as well. And this is looking dire straight. Three minutes left, more than enough time to get this last stock. 140 in the percentage run. Danger is all abound right now. As you know, this is this is RJ just kind of fighting for their life right now. Another side attack. This is a the dash attacks are doing a little bit of work here, but that's gonna be the bomb to finish. Oh. Pitt did such an outstanding job. There's a reason why they were able to take the first game of this set was simply because of their timing and the good reads that they have it as well. I was very impressed. I know we haven't seen Pain, uh, Pain on broadcast yet, Orbital, but there's a reason why they made the finals. I think Penn is a large portion of that. I thought Kirby was doing a great job. I thought RJ did a great job, you know, uh, trying to switch up pace. But even like you saw in one example where they're looking to get the stone down and then cancel it so that way they could get a hit from above and maybe down air with the Kirby feet uh, and twist. Uh, but they weren't able to do it, and they weren't able to accomplish it because the read, knowing that they were going to try to throw that fake, it did seem like Penn was just a step ahead, even as even as that first game felt. It really did seem like that was the testing ground. And, and this is something that we saw back in the semifinals as well. Whenever it comes down to these matchups, uh, even in crew battles and everything of the sort, the first player to go out is usually your most versatile, uh, whether it be in the character pool or just how you play in general. And I think Kirby and Game and & Watch, uh, as we were talking about, are two interesting ones to go for game and watch specifically can get a sneaky game off that one was not sneaky but it was a good one and then the kirby is just like i mean it's not great of course but you can you can deal with a few things and i think rj is that tester hey what are they going to throw out here in the first round so you got the information now the question is uh, rj actually going to swap and are we going to see pen swap as well because last time rj swapped over to the king k rule pretty much immediately and i can I don't know if I could see the King K role being a better example of facing off against the Game & Watch, but I mean, if Pin makes the switch, then maybe you consider it. I just, it, there's so much size and you have and bring in more health. So if you end up getting juggled, it's more difficult to get out of with the King K role, but you also have more health to, to, to work with as well, which I think was a big part of that. Um, that being said, I don't know if there's you get too much value out of making that switch to the King K Wolf from RJ. Mm -hmm. I think you know Kirby was enough to at least get things going. I think it's gonna stay put, but you never know. We saw already with Grandview, you saw firsthand how willing they are to switch. So to say that they're gonna go back with the same characters, I think is a, a bit of a reach, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the only reason I would want to see the switch is a little bit heavier. You get to you get to see if you can kind of um 
deal with the floaty aspect you mentioned that game and watch has that kind of uh, ability to keep you in the air especially with that air pump it is very frustrating to try to get down from it you could almost body your way through it if you're the king k rule and also you wouldn't be put in those floating situations you're more ground level for it so if it is going to be a swap that's the only reason that i would really want to see that go down and no you are 100 percent correct we are still on that Kirby, and of course with the character, a uh, little, uh, little skin change there. Feels good, both a gray to fight it out here. Yeah, and uh, you know, thinking about it, you know, King K. Rool wouldn't be a bad swap because, you know, King K. Rool existed back in the 2D days, back when uh, Donkey Kong Country was around, the 1 through 3, one of my favorite games uh, of all time. So uh, King K. Rool obviously being the adversary for the Donkey Kong world, and uh, to face this 2D Game & Watch, and that's it's always been fun. But... Either way, you're back to the same characters, and uh, Game & Watch off to a hot start here. So, again, Penn kind of leading the way here as far as what we've seen throughout, and we'll look to continue that up to 94% before you play. I think that's actually going to be a big problem. This time, remember, uh, you are watching. RJ try and stay away from just above Game & Watch, but that neutralizes a lot of what Kirby does want to try and use. Both grab the ledge right there, but the up B is going to give a little bit more space to the Game & Watch, and with the settle on the top platform, you're more than okay to edge guard on this side as well. Going ahead, spamming that food and ensuring that Kirby has to go high. Frustrating spot to be in 155. Easy kill threat. Fishbowl not really going to land, and a forward dash is going to do enough damage. So you can see the likes of RJ really trying to fight back, trying to get an up tilt situation, but the bombs are more than enough. And first stock goes the way of the game watch. Yeah, that's something you, you'll need to adjust for if you're RJ. Not all lost. You're stocked down, yes. And haven't put up a whole lot of percentage, but that's been a couple of times where you'll forget about the projectiles because there's just so much going on with the game and watch. You're trying to avoid juggles. You're trying to avoid uh, just a stage by stage or on stage brawls with your hands, right? And so there's so many things that you're trying to consider that you forget about the projectiles, but they could be the most dangerous. And right now, game and watch has just had every bit of every read. It, as a Kirby, you just don't have enough mobility in my oh. eyes for the bone. And, and again already off the stage as twice we've seen just about the exact same thing orbital i mean that down smash as well i think is something that was a good read coming out of pen you read that that roll was going to come in you get the smash and then you get the uh forward smash easy into that sock and all of a sudden this is rj going how the heck do i deal with this the three stock scenario you have to play perfectly on this last and you're not doing that right now mostly i wouldn't say against your own it's just Pen is doing so well right now. Food is out once again to cover that ledge. Still sets in front, but the up B to create some space. Top ropes where you're sitting, but remember, this is the dangerous spot to be in. You know what Pen is going to throw down here. The air pump is out, puts you at about 86 with an extra turtle hit. And this is looking like a kill threat. The last stock is in danger zone, but an up smash to give yourself at least one back. Yeah, and steps, baby steps at this point in time, because basically, you know, at this point, it felt like it's over, like the set is over, so to get that one back, it just gives you a conversation, but look at that, another down smash in such the opportune times. I like the variety. I mean, he's uh, trawling deep into uh, the moveset of Game & Watch to attack from just about every angle, and that's what good Game & Watches will do, and they've uh, proven that that's the case. You know, Pen might actually be a... Uh, uh, you know, the first hand, but Penn and Teller seems to be it because they are a magician with how they're getting away with all of this. Penn will win the first set here for Mountain Vista and Vista Smash Varsity. Wow. Very nicely done. And it was a 2-0 once again. Keep in mind, though, this is RJ. And I don't want to say RJ is bad by any stretch of the imagination, but you are the opener. You are the one that's meant to test the opponent. And I think RJ did an amazing job there playing against Game & Watch. Not easy and even opting in to a low variety output. Every single move of Kirby's is pretty much centralized around the character itself. Versus a Game & Watch, you can quite literally encompass you in all of these attacks. I think it was a very well fought battle. And for as close as it did get at points and for how far it was, I think RJ played valiantly. I agree with you. So now we look at a Mountain Vista here and see what else they can throw out here. A lot of Bowser shown, uh, although granted Avery and Briston play them once in a while. Um, Pikachu could come out, or if they get Briston, could they go the Joker route? So, I mean, Ooh. a lot of variety there, too. Joker is such a, a phenomenal uh, DLC character that, that can do a whole lot of damage pretty quickly, but also has that mobility as well. Joker is such a... I wouldn't consider him a well-rounded player, but, I mean, they pack a punch and they do so much that it feels that way sometimes. 
Mm -hmm. And the extra abilities behind it, whenever you bring that extra piece out, is, is what really brings it over the edge. If you're not used to it, the extended abilities and the ability to get back on the stage as well, uh, yeah. if you're the opponent, you don't actually do very well into it. I played against it, and it's not fun. Um, this is a surprise factor. Normally at a high percentage, you're like, hey, we got it. I can go ahead and keep this player on the edge. Of course, the recovery in the neutral form is great either way. But overall, it's just, hey, there are some question marks. Now, of course, coming out for Grandview is Jonathan. And Jonathan was the one that really did impress me uh, for this squad. Uh, Jonathan was the, uh, I believe, set four player as well to seal the deal. Uh, to move into the Grand Finals, had a very large uh, character pool, plays a very nasty wolf. So if that comes out, that'll be against the uh, Pikachu. Of course, it sounds like so Avery on the Pikachu versus Jonathan on the Wario to kick off here. Oh, man. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, I, I, you said it incredible. I was able to watch through a lot of that film that we saw from the last one. And if we did our research correctly, producer could have uh, could have definitely or is going to stand by on the mountain that they could be top 10 in Colorado. I don't know how factual mm -hmm. it is. Maybe they'll correct me in chat, but that's an insane mark with knowing how deep the smash community goes in colorado there's just so much talent mm -hmm. everybody in this finals is incredible i mean we saw 16 teams today in colorado with the uh, colorado uh, high school activities association competes here and everyone brought all oh, so much talent um and jonathan to be one of the best to be in the top 10 there's a reason why uh, jonathan impresses is what i'm getting at here mm -hmm. it, it's a scary scary time right now so this is gonna be a fun one to watch for keep in mind I, I like the tag is, is Avery, and that makes me so happy. It is Pikachu versus Wario. Let's go ahead and throw it down on some Town and City. All right. All right. Pikachu, known to dive in very frequently. It's very much a rush character, rush down, uh, get into Wario, because, I mean, if you let that WAP just kind of build up over time, that's going to send the Pikachu going really quickly. So it's going to be about the patience of the Wario, and it's going to be about attacking as a Pikachu, as Avery. You've got to be on Wario, make sure uh, that you're causing a ton of damage early. And right now, I don't think 12% is quite getting it done, at least not yet. Nope, gotta take a little bit more time, and without these platforms, it actually lends itself to, I think, Wario's win. You see Pikachu loves to play in a little bit more platform-esque. He likes to be able to zip around, use those Thunderbolts as much as possible, and the Lightning Bolts as well, and those up these Quick Attack to be able to get back on the stage. Platforms are starting to come back, but they're a little bit further off stage than you would really like. The Wario is just trying to play at range, get that damage down if you can. I think that's going to be a good sign. Both of them are just kind of jockeying for position as well. Neither wants to get directly in the face. And when you do, it's an almost automatic swap back to the ledges here. So I like how they're playing. Just an interesting to watch for as that's another quick attack to kind of get some percentage. Yeah, Wario, again, incredible job on the shields. There's, you don't get out against Pikachu at 38% after, what, about a minute played already? Uh, over a minute now, a minute 20 played in. We already see uh, Wario just uh, avoiding any kind of damage Pikachu is able to get after them. And great timing there as well. You saw the charge whenever Wario glows. That's not when you want to be around. And sure enough, they'll take the first stock too. It felt like it was going to happen. It's just a matter of when, and Jonathan got it done early. And now with the bike exploding, it causes a little bit more residual damage. And now you kind of get in the face with the stock lead. You can play a lot more uh, unfiltered is the best way I can put it. You can go in, you know, realize that you have a little extra. Remember, all this extra uh, percentage you're playing with is free time. And there's the walk. Easy bomb there. Another stock gone in the blink of an eye. Just patience, timing on the shields. I, I said if you can wait out a Pikachu and then get them in a, a situation where they're frustrated because they can't cause any damage. So difficult to do. And the waft was able to send them launching off the side in a what feels like a legit two stock advantage here. Finally, Pikachu getting some combos though. And now we'll rush down to get even more damage done. Uh, but the question is, Orbital, is it too late here? At least it steps in the right direction. Even if you do drop this game, at least maybe you get some momentum back rolling into the next one. I, I, I will be honest, I think it's a little bit too late. Uh, this is the time when Wario is just like unhinged and easy to kind of get any hits down. You're willing to trade out percentages because you have that extra stock and half. Honestly, Avery needs way cleaner combos right now. Is able to get the down smash, able to spin out a little bit, but you can see, even with that launch, Pikachu doesn't actually have great finishing moves. The lethal moves are not exactly great. The Thunderbolt, uh, the down B is powerful if you wish, but it's it's hard to land without the proper setup. And at 147, the setup is actually not that great. You get launched too high with any of the throws. That's what we're kind of watching for there. That's the shoulder charge, and that'll be the sock easy, does it? Oh, Three socks left to JV3 for the likes of Jonathan. There are not a lot of players in Colorado that can take a stock at all from Jonathan. And there's a reason why. I insane, clinical, 
you were, you were so impressed by what you saw in the semifinals, and now that I get to see a little bit more in, in person and uh, here on the stage, insane moves from Jonathan. It's just as good as Mountain Vista is, and they are great. I don't know if you're going to deal with this, Jonathan. I think this might just be a, a set that goes his way, to be honest. I don't know if there's – and, the, again, not no disrespect at all. It's just that – there's just that much talent. And even if you're Mountain Vista, you got to be sitting back like, man, I mean, props to you. you incredible player you've got on the other side. Uh, it's plain and simple. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there going, how do I actually deal with this? Well, number one is you're probably not dealing with the Wario again. Uh, for anything that's out there, I don't think – I, I don't think Jonathan's sitting there like, hey, I, I feel really, really rough about this matchup. I'm going to stay on my same character. This is, I feel like this is Jonathan having fun. And that causes a lot of problems, not only in the uh, in the ability to kind of read what your opponent's going to do. The factor is uh, you don't even, you're not really allowed to predict what's going to happen next. You know, you're talking about, hey, is this set done? Not really done. It's just you don't get to strategize. It's literally just, hey, play the game. Good luck on that and, and see what you can do. So for um, for Avery, I think the Pikachu, if you can speed it up, if you feel a little bit more confident to go in and fight, I think that'll be the main difference. You're a little bit too scared, I think, playing a little bit too far. And so the chip battles did not really go your way. So if it comes down to the next one, I want to see a little bit more in aggression. Try and go for those hard combos. Even if you know you're going to take some pain back, just try and get a little bit more offensive. Yeah, exactly. It, the least that you're going to do is at least get Jonathan to start to double guess some of the moves that they bring out here, Wario or not. Uh, you want to rush down as a Pikachu no matter who you're up against. It's kind of the beauty in, in, in the, the, the trick behind Pikachu is to uh, rush down no matter who it is. You play that same style of play. It counters very well against a whole lot of players. You gotta, you gotta take those risks. You gotta find some to land. We'll see if, what happens if they come back out. The Pikachu and Wario again. So Jonathan says, I just want to close out here. By the way, Jonathan, I believe, if I'm not wrong, uh, unless I'm making this up, I, I'm pretty sure it was the Wolf that Jonathan has. Yes. And not only the incredible at Wario, that top 10 feature is with Wolf, a whole different character, that opens up your arsenal, be that unpredictability that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's a painful one to see. This is crazy stuff here and so we are watching here just uh, the smash come out here and it's a, it's a very powerful one to say the least so let's see what they can do again back on town and city the same kind of situation to occur however a little bit more stable platform town and city that we saw before has movable platforms three different combinations i believe this one's just center stage and it's a larger one as well so this affords the to a little bit more space which is what we're seeing here yes you got the damage racked up on you you're still able to fire back 46 in county you can already see Avery is trying to get into the space of this warrior a little bit more. Aye. Already. Insanity. Again, we're sitting here a minute in before Orbital 47.5%. Unfortunately, we'll not get it done, but it's just so much easier said than done. The shield timing is absolutely incredible. And oh, yeah. It, I mean, he makes the seamless efficiency of the movements with Warrior. Warrior is not typically a character that's known uh, to be mobile or to have great. Uh, efficiency in spacing, but just the way that they're able to use the efficiencies, know the lag limits that exist with Wario, and every single move that you throw out, that efficiency comes in handy and makes Wario a rather non-movable character, very mobile and very dangerous when you pack a punch and you're able to be mobile. And right now, Avery is just chasing for a chance to not have to deal with another two-stock disadvantage. You can see the fights in and out. I love the fact that you did mention that Jonathan just is so good about creating this kind of speed on a character that shouldn't have speed. But Avery is also trying to adjust there. As we said, trying to go in, obviously not really having that perfect synergy and not having that extensive speed that we would hope to see. Instead, just being the best that they can, still racking up that percentage, but still 130 on their own. Feels a little bit bad. Smash is going to open up a shoulder check, and that'll be another stock right now. Jonathan. Looking to close out with another GV3. Man, it's been very similar to just being able to send out Wario so much more in the uh, in the capacity of being able to send your, your sky high and off the top. And now, basically, if you're Jonathan, you want to be hyping up the team with the, uh, the second one coming in after RJ was able to, or, uh, you know, as you saw pin, kind of take it to you, RJ a little bit early. Now you see Jonathan with a chance to respond and be able to, to come out here. And so it would be a big spark. 
big spark to Grandview High and the Super Smash Wolves. If they're able to get this perfect, uh, you know, three stock advantage in both games, but that's what Avery's gonna do. It's definitely a play. Spoilers! But it will not happen. The 3 0 both times orbital. Jonathan showing up, showing out, and the Super Smash Wolves able to get one back on the board. Going ahead and doing that waft one more time. And uh, we mentioned Jonathan is the one to beat. And it's uh, it's becoming a lesson to say, hey, got to be careful. Got to be a little bit worried about how you fight this. And, and I like it so far. Uh, we are seeing Grandview fight back. This is pretty much the same song and dance that we saw in the semifinals. First round is a loss. Second round is, you know, Jonathan's way. And then the third round, which uh, previously, I believe, was uh, Tim that came out afterwards, is going to be trying their best to put Grandview up. But... For the side of Vista, I I want to see what else they can bring out. Keep in mind, this is a squad that I believe 3 0 their previous opponent as well. They finished up a little bit earlier. So I want to see what they can do as well. No doubt. You'll have a lot more with the Joker, Game & Watch, whoever you bring in of those two. I don't see them going Bowser because that'd be a Bowser v. Bowser um, where you don't really get advantages versus a Joker who can do so much is slide in slide out on a bowser bowser jr which we've seen from tim in the semifinals which we figure he's going to bring out at this point in time too it'll all it'll be about making sure that you if you're going to challenge uh be able to watch out for the shield that shield to spin move from bowser is known to be the play and uh there's a reason why it's so effective and, and can be there so timely challenges from mountain vista will be the name of the game and the the way that briston can come out here and gain the advantage back from mountain vista and maybe uh get ahead and force match point here in the series orbital yes and then as soon as you do as either way it's already a one one we know we're going to a set four and that's kind of the fun here as yep. soon as we get to see what everyone else is playing which we are getting briston right now uh coming out here in set three I want to know who you toss out to go fight once again, because keep in mind so far, the way that it's gone down is Jonathan is your uh, kind of uh, center in the roster, but in set four each time, I would expect to see Jonathan again, and it'll be up to Vista to kind of decide who you want to play against them. That's actually where my eyes are currently at. It's just, you know, look towards that game four, but it'll be interesting to see as... Um, Okay, so we do have the Bowser and the Joker. This is what we discussed before. Both of their mains coming out here. We'll see what goes down. No doubt. Uh, you know, for, for Briston, I was about to speculate on, on the game and watch. Um, one of the reasons why, if you look at the characters used from Mountain Vista, it, it goes a long way with showing what team chemistry can really show you what what can your fellow teammates in their mains what can they teach you so that way you have an extra game and watch if it seems to be one that the other team is struggling with and you know uh with how effective pen was on that game and watch to have briston uh, have a game and watch in that arsenal as well but also the bowser which we've seen from avery from time to time so they pick similar characters because they're able to teach one another that's what i love about high school esports and esports in general honestly it provides opportunities to become leaders to become coaches and be able to help some of your fellow students with some of these uh, uh changes that sometimes you see in characters for example for smash or strategies when it comes to basically every single esport i love seeing it uh, but person will take in the joker and i think it's the right choice here at the end of the day here at orbital yep you're gonna give it their best shot and of course with this one you're gonna try and put yourself up a set for the side of vista you have to realize that i think this is going to be that big one that you need to make for yourself because you need to have that extra set you know jonathan's gonna be coming out here it's gonna be a dangerous one to kind of fight for so you want the ease of access for this set and work your way forward right now good opening currently working towards their favor percentages are close now that's a grab the side b is strong and giving a nice 15 to the opponent. That a much better look here for Mount Vista right now. But still down as far as percentage goes. And uh, the thing about getting playing against Bowser is you have to have that percentage. You've got to get it up to like 150. I don't care how hard of a punch that Joker has, yep. especially with your weaponry that you're able to do. Uh, the downward gun is not able to land there too. And that'll leave you vulnerable oh. for a smash up on the top ropes, if you will. Uh, the platforms as a smackdown from Bowser will do uh, a lot of damage, but still in the 78 range versus the 107. So uh, not a whole lot done, even with the grabs early. Hey. Still leaving the door open for this Bowser to really get to work. I mean, that's also a big one as that's a mess up right there. Briston unfortunately loses a sock to what I can only consider is an SD situation. Joker had run out just at the wrong time. And that hurts. That hurts a lot. And mentality is everything in esports. And, and for that to happen, you just got to brush it off the shoulders, though. This will be a testament. 
Yeah, you know, Bristol, there's a reason why they make it to the Grand Finals, and great, now you'll see fair play. Uh, down with the Bowser here, so we're back at even stocks regardless. That must have been uh, communication between two of these players. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna try and play it out, so we'll see what gets thrown down. Right now, Joker is back out with the full force he can. Percentage is not really working in your favor, though. Good tag, now a grab into a forward air. Gonna keep him on the ledge. And it is going to be Tim just trying to struggle for a little bit of control over this factor. You can see that fight and a little bit of a drop down. High recovery, but a miss again! Oh, heartbreaking moments here right now for Briston. It's very difficult. All eyes on, on screen here. In, in the final situation, it can be very, very difficult, especially uh, for this team to kind of bounce back. We haven't seen Mountain Vista. They haven't been on screen. They haven't been the forefront of focus thus far. And you can see it coming into uh, a play, a bit of a factor here. When you are front and center on stream, sometimes those mistakes will happen. Oh, we don't let it happen three times here now. But right now, uh, Preston in a very peculiar spot here. Tim, I mean, credit Tim for putting them in a sticky situation where they have to make a decision that perhaps went very sideways. And they are able to get this stock to even back up. So, I mean, a couple mistakes and you're still in this though. Mm -hmm. The forward smash was a good read as well. Uh, I, I believe that was Tim that went a little bit further than the ledge and just landed right in front of that smash. So very nicely done there, of course, with a little bit of swap back down. You bring out that ghost, you bring out that shadow in your awake side, and now you're gonna try and fight it out. This is now the third time that you've done so. They're gonna try and hang on and fire away. 62, 63 counting up from there. Tim getting chipped out as much as possible. You're trying to wait out this timer. You can before you use the side B to actually gather up a little bit of a claw game, but that forward air is punting you to the side. You're going to challenge the air, and you do! What a dub and a half! Briston comes back from the nails of defeat and is able to find game one. What did I tell you, Orbital? When you're in a sticky situation, you might make mistakes, but if you're able to brush it off the shoulders, you can come back stronger, and that's what Briston was able to accomplish here. Doesn't feel good if you're Tim, because... I thought they were doing a great job to mitigate the uh, the speed of Joker to avoid some of the projectiles and really avoid some of the damage early in that one. And you saw Bristol with a couple of mistakes. At that point in time, it's up to you to be able to take advantage of it and close out. But luckily, that's why it's a best of three. And you come back out and uh, come back out even stronger too. Uh, the grabs were landing. The shields were on point. You're doing a lot of things right, but just uh, succumbing to the damage. That's why we said Joker in my opinion, wins this battle against Bowser, like, probably, like, 85% of the time in my eyes. Again, uh, I, as a Bowser player, I hated going up against Joker. Very difficult matchup, and maybe we just saw a sneak peek of that, potentially. That is something that we do have to watch for, and and I think for uh, I, I think for Tim, we are going to see a character swap. Go to the Bowser Jr., have a little bit faster time, be a little bit more speedy. You tested out the Joker, and you're like, okay, hey, that, is, that did not work. I mean, it if you allow your opponent to st twice and you still can't win it, something's got to change like fundamentally either that or we're going to see a giant mental shift as well and you say okay well i'm going to try and trade out maybe i wasn't as aggressive as i would have liked during those ghost forms maybe uh well the full power was out i didn't aggress as hard as i thought i could so these little pieces of the puzzle will be coming together and i want to sit there and kind of watch what happens because Tim, I'm also sure, has more than just Bowser and Bowser Jr. in their back pocket. That's the other side of it. I want to see what else is to be played out and what they're going to run with. Oh, man. Yeah, that's an interesting call. You know, you, you talked about a little bit more mobility, and that's true with Bowser Jr., but how much uh, for what you get on the other side of it? And uh, I hope so. And we, I, you pointed it out. We saw eight different characters between these three players in the semifinals. But... In my opinion, I didn't catch all of it. I don't even think I saw Tim play in this one. It was a quick 3-0 after all for Grandview in that semifinals. Did they pull out something different than Bowser, or they, were they on those two? Uh, it, it was it was a 3-1. Keep that one in mind. Uh, Tim oh, Tim went it. third, so that's what it was. But it was it felt very quick. If you it, uh, if you disregard the game one, it did feel like it was a pretty quick 3-0 just because of the control that uh, Tim and Jonathan kind of maintain. And Tim did not play anything else. It was 2-0 in their set. So everyone is just like very. Yeah, we're, we're good to go. That's all it was. Tim, though, felt one of the more, uh, I, I want to say more almost lackadaisical style. It was much more methodical. It was just like, hey, do what I can and maybe get the win. It wasn't as fast and as almost angry like Jonathan's was. So that's why I do want to see that Bowser Jr. That's why we saw kind of that speed up moment. Or I want to see another character. I don't think the Bowser is going to handle that Joker like you were talking about. 
Yeah, you know, when you talk about Bowser, there's just sometimes you want to play a character, and especially if it's your main, by the way. But uh, you want to play sometimes you want to play a character that just smash him up, grab him, throw him off the edge. You know, like a Donkey Kong at Bowser, sometimes it'll work. But, um, you know, when it gets a little bit more difficult, when you have a team like Mountain Beast, who's proven that they can really have the skill, even when they make mistakes, they can come back and punch you in the mouth a little bit, so that you're able to come back out and have a little, at least a little bit of strategy to kind of back that up. I think that's where Bowser Jr. comes in. Um, I think you stick, especially in the finals you've gotten this far throughout the season. You might as well run it, run it back here. But the Bowser versus Bowser Jr. combination, I would like to see something switch up for Bowser. Like you mentioned, it would be the right choice. Uh, but Briston on the Joker, couple of misses there, but maybe it's part of their strategy, you know, just get in their heads and uh, and, and make them think that they're a little bit uh, in a more advantageous position than maybe they are. This and for uh, this entire thing, it's just like going down to it. I'm going to be sitting there going, how is this going to break out? Because this has, I think, pretty decent implications for the upcoming uh, uh, set four. If this is won by Briston, you take a huge sigh of relief because one way or another, I think it is going to be Jonathan heading into that step four. So if you give yourself a little bit of leeway, that is going to be so, so helpful. Right now we are getting in. It is going to be that Bowser to come out here. And we're going to see a little bit of a flyby action here. Going to try and speed things up. All right. All right. We saw... Uh... Yeah, we saw Tammy He said, uh, abandon ship when it comes to the Bowser and instead jump on the Bowser Jr. And uh, we'll see that mobility again. At least you bring in a bit of a vehicle here to get things moving. Downward guns get a land, but we'll push up the percentage to 61%. But I mean, it was already so quick to begin with. Good answers, though. A couple of one-two punches. The combo comes out for the Bowser Jr. Make it more as Tam able to uh, get them as they were di in. And the Joker uh, has some good potential damage against both characters uh, being able to punch right now they're they're meshing and both are able to throw punches pretty evenly right now that's a lot different than what we saw earlier i think keep in mind uh previously uh, the joker had way more ground cover and i think that big part is those bombs that are being set down that grab bomb combo is covering so many options that even if the person is able to land a strike it's big but that's gonna be a slash back and that'll be the forward smash to grab that sock. As much as we were talking up the fact that Tim was doing quite well, this time around is still having a little bit of trouble. However, going for that stock right there, 136 on Joker. Does this go right? Good grab, though. Briston trying to line up as much damage as they can. Percentage-wise, you want about 60 or 70 with the lead that you are trying to get. Yeah. Bristol with their projectiles here, forcing Bowser Jr. now at this point in time, uh, forcing Tim to jump, and then the neutral air is so powerful from Joker with how quick it lands and how much damage is mitigated with it. Again, you'll see an example of that. Push them off the edge, downward guns, try to finish it. Look at recovery oh. effort, and that sends Bristol. He was so focused trying to edge guard that again we see them fall off the edge, and that so many times we've seen that happen in this in this finals hero. Dangers are abound. If either player makes a single mistake, things are going to look bad. So, how much further can they go? 101 and counting. 105, 106. The count goes higher and higher, and then an up smash to finish it. Briston looking in strong control. Quick turnaround. It's Joker can send you off the edge before you even know it. That's why Joker gets so much love and so much play, is even when you make mistakes, or even if you do see him, and Joker has this tendency too, don't get us wrong, it's not like there's, it's first in just making mistake after mistake, it's just not a whole lot of survivability sometimes with Joker, but the punch is so packed where if you can trace it together some of the combos, which is what we've seen, be difficult to do. And now the cart trying to play some mind games here to answer that is Tim on this end with the Bowser Jr. And uh, Joker able to make it back on stage though, so Briston doing a good job to at least get back to it and try to gain a little bit of the stage control that's been pretty dominant by Tim thus far, regardless of the fact that they're down a stock. Oh. But they need to take one sooner rather than later, this damage is adding up pretty quickly. And that's a problem because you can see Briston is just like, I don't have to go hard, I can just look at the chip. Yes, that's an up smash, but 68 to 70% is solid to play for this last stock. Briston with a fresh stock, ready to fire away knows the kind of combinations that are going to come out here and it is going to be Jonathan or Tim to try and play at a pretty arm's a length if he can. A little bit of a spinner with the neutral air trying to bounce and get that cart rolling but not really going to have it forward air. Going to be able to create some space and Briston is kind of held at a decent range. Keep eyes on that meter that's going to be the big part to play for an upbeat to try and deny a float back down. Cart rolls in. Looks like they're going to hold steady. 99.5 
Out bat up to 107. And this is a great spot. A little bit of the board tilt. Gonna be enough, but it's a soft hit. Now looking for that smash. Can you predict where Tim will land? Another grab. So or is this gonna be it? The down smash not gonna work instead. The down air is just very, very close. Tim's been great at, at throwing different fakes here with the card, but it, it wasn't fooling Tim, or sorry, it wasn't fooling, fooling Kristen at first until the very end there, where he saw a bit of an adjustment there in order to get back to it. So they've been able to at least mitigate some of the damage that could have come oh. out here. Kristen able to push it on the edge. It's going to be a similar recovery yet again. Tim showing different looks to get back on stage. That's the only thing saving them right now because they've been pretty uh, pretty good with the edge guards. Kristen's been doing a good job to try to hold them off, but the recoveries have been one after another, but 100. 160% here. Oh, Great whoa! Flex Trump, and now gonna try to attack it as well. They get it done! What a sequence! Incredible work from Tim to stay alive here in this set, and even at one for Grandview High. Oh, that felt illegal. That felt very, <laughs> very wrong, and honestly, that was Briston getting a little bit antsy on that. You went for the finish off the edge, you knew that Bowser Jr. has some hits in their arsenal, a lot of AoE on those airs, and you know the recovery uh, for Bowser Jr. is much stronger than base Joker. So it was a gamble. It didn't pay off like you wanted it to. It was a great attempt, though. Very, very stylish. Great, it is going to force a game three here, and I think for Briston, you're going to have a little bit more under lock and key moving into this third agreed with you and, and definitely a bit of confidence there that was the mo ultimate move to gain confidence what a risky move but the thing is if you think about it tim was spending so much time off of stage anyways that they're getting a lot of reps in i mean they have already and they already know your character very well but you've been living off stage basically the entire time with that bowser jr and you never felt very uncomfortable the recoveries were very strong they threw different looks to get back on the stage a few times uh, uh they would switch it up as far as if they grab ledger even if they go to attack before they even need to uh, to throw the joker off there and uh it really got into briston's head there and i can't say enough about that finish from tim if anything's gonna get you wild up and not only yourself but the rest of your team as well when you have to go to inevitably to a game four that's the way to get it done Mm -hmm. And remember, this has heavy implications for Vista. If you're able to pull out this victory, you pretty much secure that either way. Like, I hate saying this, but anyone that Jonathan plays against is going to have a rough time. So you have a high chance percentage of going to a game five and you can annihilate Jonathan one way or another. So the way to kind of look at it, I think, is if Vista win this one, uh, Grand, you have to have a guarantee that they're going to go to a game five or, or a set five, and you just need a guarantee, and your best guarantee is Jonathan. So you send Jonathan, and after that, most likely, I would say it's Tim to come back out, depending on who Vista sent for set four. That's what I'm really looking at. So that would only work if this is going to be uh, Briston able to take the victory. So that's what we're going to be watching for. That's what we got to see, and we got to see which character they decide to go for, because I think the Joker still worked. He just got a little bit over anxious. I don't want to see you swap out. Yeah, it's easy to do that, too. It's easy to fall in that trap, especially when you had such a strong stock one and two. Um, and then at, towards the end, you felt like you were doing everything right. You controlled the entirety of the stage. You forced uh, Tim off stage for a majority of it. So from their perspective on that same side of the coin, you found good things and were developing good things. So I see them going back to the Joker. I do. And in fact, I believe it's where it might have been confirmed here. That Joker will mm. be back here, too. So um, I do like the move. Pay a little bit of patience towards the end might do you favors um just continue that same strat and now that you know what to look for especially when it comes to recoveries you just gotta expose it a little bit more maybe some confidence that we, like we saw from the tim side comes out of the briston side and can definitely change the tide of this one that was still a very close set in fact you had it basically in your back pocket until the very end so um briston just got to come back even stronger knowing with confidence that you're able to win the first set regardless of the mistakes that you made and uh come back headstrong I think it's uh I, I think both players have now identified that they made some mistakes. I think both players have sat there going, okay, okay, we both got a little bit over eager. We both had, you know, some of those moments that we probably shouldn't have gone for those combos or those confirms or anything like that. So let's we'll see what throws down here. I think it's gonna be a good one. Either way, this will be the finish for set three. We're going to town and city of all places, a drastically different spot to be in. Yeah, it certainly is. I'm thinking about implications for this game for but Grandview gets through this. 
uh, set. If Tam's able to pull off another one like we saw just now, it gives Grandview that 2 1 advantage. Then you come right back out with the Jonathan, you know, and, and, and then you have that confidence. But if you drop it, and then they're match point against, you keep the Jonathan in the back pocket. So there's so many implications, not only in this game. I know maybe I'm getting ahead of myself right now, Orbital, but I still like to look into the future and see what it might mean. It, you know, that feels like it's everything for Grandview that Tim wants to put it all on the line right now. So that way, if they get the advantage, you're able to kind of roll with it into the game. Right now, that lower platform as well might be helping out for this Bowser Jr. Might be doing a little bit better, kind of collect towards the middle of the stage. Not that double platform that we're watching for, but what a great little bit of fire to launch out. The burn is doing so much work. You're trying to fire back, but it's difficult. In this scenario, the Joker does feel like they have good control, but what a grab and a throw. Keep him on the ledge and the bomb to finish. Well plays, well done for the side of Tim. The bombs were doing big things, but oh. this. But not this! Oh my goodness! Tim, now in a place where you can just play simplified. You don't have to do much else because unfortunately it looks like Briston uh, more issues happening. So, I mean, Tim now in an advantageous spot and that's what I'll leave it out here. That just hurts. And uh, right now, we can see just this one stock here. Person is actually doing a really good job of still controlling. Remember, when you get down to this last stock in this kind of three stock versus one scenario, you need to play nearly perfectly. You need to play smart and you need to get that first stock quickly. Be able to fire away with that punch of the guns. You're trying to keep them on the low ground. And the setting there is always so dangerous. However, it was looking good. It's not so much more. 46% is rough now at 62 a nice slash a fight over those smashes gives away for the joker no grab we had though as 201 quite honestly it's crazy that tim is still alive on the stock normally you don't reach these percentages it's crazy to say the least hard punches full side a though smash gonna finish that stock Finally, we talked about the Bowser Jr. Maybe a little bit smaller than Bowser, but can still take that punch. As a Joker, you're forced to rely. You have to respect the bombs that the Bowser Jr. has been throwing out, and so you have to uh, find ways around it, which is the dash. Uh, well, you've seen the dash shield plenty of times, and look out! Suddenly, a couple of stocks back here. Tim off the edge just made it interesting. Oh, man. 110. Tim, you can't let this get to you right now. A little bit of a bomb thrown right back at you. Fire to catch. Let me out, and that's gonna be another smash. Not the finish that you were hoping for, though. This is gonna be a hang and a half. Waiting for the opportunity. Great attempt at the guard. Gonna allow for the upper side to go. And right now, this is dangerous territory. Briston realizes that they have been given a chance here. Tim needs to play smart. That's a grab. That's a slash. You keep on the ledge. You might have a dub. Joker is ready to go. Bar is fully charged. You find a time to go ahead and pop that up. There it is. You get a chance at a big, big comeback. Another grab. Setup is there. Good DI out. This is Tim needing to hang on. Briston. Oh. And look, there it is. Oh. The punch at the right time. All that work from Briston, unfortunately, will go by the wave side because it's Tim taking the set, giving Grand View High and the Super Smash Wolves Black a chance to close out in game four because of that win. They'll be up 2 1 in this series. And Briston works all the way back, but Tim stayed cool, stayed confident, and there were so many different looks. I mean, the bombs were landing orbital. Uh, the punches were good. The, the the shields were timed correctly. The no panic attitude towards the end. Sure, they would have liked to play a little bit of a cleaner set. I think they would be the first ones to tell you. But at the end of the day, it's if you get the job done and you set up for what is inevitably a Jonathan for Grandview rolling into the next game, they definitely put themselves in a very advantageous match point here. I think right now, taking a look at the entire matchup, that one, I, I do really need to be cleaner. I think it's just the nerves getting to them a little bit, so yeah, I wouldn't yeah. put too much stock on it. What I'd actually be looking for is who is going to face Jonathan. You don't want to send Avery again because Avery lost, and that uh, that did not feel good to fight. And Penn was able to find a win earlier, but quite honestly, I'm not sure Game & Watch is going to have a good time. I think Jonathan has more than enough in the tank to deal with kind of a, a more jokey character like that one. I would say your best bet honestly it is still on that top side though that's the other end of it because everyone else has lost on the team and i don't know mentally if you're ready to go so i it's between penn and uh briston but uh, of who i would actually send in that set for i agree 
I think Pan on the, on the Rob bringing in a dominating character just mm. it seems like uh, okay it, it feels like a uh, uh, last holding off ditch effort to just play a little bit more of a dominating style. Perhaps you catch Jonathan in a spot where he thinks he's a little bit ahead of the game here, ahead of the curve, which rightfully so. I mean, he's showed off pretty well how why he seems to be considered that way. But at the same time, maybe you catch them by surprise. That Rob really can get to work. You have the gyro as well, so you have your own form of projectiles to make them look out. Um, and if you're able to catch Jonathan snoozing for maybe one or two stocks, go up a game, and then suddenly you might have a chance here. I do like Penn. You have the 2-0. You need to bring out your strongest player. It almost feels inevitable that Grandview's taking out Jonathan or bringing in Jonathan, and that's exactly what we'll see. We'll see the Jonathan pin that we wanted to see Orbital. I can't wait for this one. This should be an incredible matchup here for set four. It should if things go their way. Quite honestly, I'm also curious about the stage that's going to be thrown down. Uh, Game & Watch needs that neutral territory to fight for, and it is Warrior versus Game & Watch. So this is going to be a projectile battle of some. If the Warrior can break into the territory, into that zone of Game & Watch setting up, then you're going to have a good time. Warrior doesn't like to play too much in the vertical. The only time that you are is when the waft is fully charged. So, you know, the up airs coming out of the Game & Watch is not going to be as prevalent as, as we saw before. I just don't think it's going to be as easy to land on someone that quite literally doesn't have to be up there so we'll see what goes on we're gonna go straight into the match here it's gonna be a good time Jonathan, can they be as dominant as they've been since well the day started quite frankly pretty early in the day in colorado here from us on the east coast broadcasting here as well it has been a long day just the same and it's gonna be wrapped up potentially if jonathan can get things done on the wario and it, now it's just about being able to get a little bit of damage, get the head early. That Game & Watch was so effective, and you already see that not a whole lot of damage done. Just the timing, the spacing is everything with Wario and Jonathan plays it so, so strongly. That being said, a couple of punches thrown. Still get them up to 22%, but uh, Jonathan's still making work in here in the first half. Oh, man. It is... It is a battle, and, and you can see here, Jonathan's even like, okay, how do, how do I want to actually go about this? How do I want to try and win this game? Because, you know, it's it's good to win, but at the same time, you saw some of the mistakes that can occur. And with Game & Watch, it is, if you do make a mistake, they will get a good punch down. You already saw it there, about 30% chunked out. So you don't want to get too close and in their face. What a blow, though. A little bit of a high ball move. He comes down to also hit, and it does seem that this is going to be Penn having a little bit of a good time here. Another launch up a little bit further as you do have to navigate your way back down to shoot the ladder style error. Constantly in the back of the mind. Love the way that Penn's been able to approach it, but at the end of the day, gotta look out for that heavy punch from the Wario again. Now looking for the up aerial as well. The up air, not able to land though, and back down to this game and watch. So you drop the first stock here, it feels like you still need to find a lethal dose on the other end. Uh, oh. to seven out, but it was nullified by the red shield here of the Wario, continuing to be able to be very map aware, very stage aware on everything that this game and watch is trying to throw at you. That would have been so fun to hit. I think a seven, yes, it drops the apples, but I think it still does a decent amount of damage. So that I think that would have been the stock out, would have been great to see. And I like to see that Penn is actually going for that. That is the one way that you can reverse some of these situations and uh, some of these uh, kind of stock differences. So I, I really do want to see if you do go for it once again. It leaves you very vulnerable, though, if you don't land it. So that's the other side of it. We'll see how it goes down. 149 and counting, honestly. This is uh, Jonathan playing kind of on borrowed time, but another WAP takes it. We mentioned it. The stock reversal is just too good on the Wario. This is why Wario doesn't get played very often until you see a very good Wario or one that understands how to play a Wario like Jonathan is capable of doing. One of the reasons why is in order to play Wario very well, it's incredibly difficult to do the ins and outs of it to be able to be patient enough to wait for the WAP. But if you can do it, if you're a strong enough player, then Wario is insane. It's so hard to beat. Jonathan's proving why to get these first two stocks on uh, on pin right now has been absolutely ridiculous. Jonathan is putting on a clinic here a little bit away from being able to send them packing here at least get this first game with a statement piece now that being said i love that pin was able to take a stock it proves that there is vulnerability that you have a possibility to go up against this jonathan but right now jonathan's been doing just about everything right 
Well, keep in mind how much of a percentage you had to hit as well. Wario is, is I believe, kill threat within 150, 160. You had to go almost to 200 to do so, and it doesn't feel good that you have to climb that high with a game and watch. So, as much as we do want to say the stock went well, it didn't feel uh, amazing to get there. So, right now, it is, as, as much as I say it's good, this value right now, three pokes in the belly, that's kind of their signature. Look at that. Looking for the shoulder check. You can't. Waff comes out only half on the charge, though, so it's not going to be fully completed. Instead, you're just trying to create space, but you walk into the up smash, and that's another stock granted. 126, and then the back here to finish it off. That will be it. As a little bit of a closer one than I think Jonathan would. I agree. I agree with you. That being said, I love the way that you close that out, right? Because you're like, oh, yes. oh, here comes Pen. Pen's got an opportunity here. Down to the final stock. And it didn't last more than 0.5 seconds when they dropped back down to get that back air to send them packing. Uh, Jonathan came up with a very quick answer. Jonathan maybe didn't feel the best about it, especially coming off of that 2-0 that seemed pretty uh, clinical. But still, you got the job done and you answered back instantly, even when there was a chance to breathe for Penn, where you felt like there was an opportunity for him to come back um, and, and throw that opportunity, taken instantly away. And I like that from Jonathan. And now you're one game away, just one game away, just three stocks away from a championship title here at Play Versus. It feels good. I think for Jonathan, someone that's been in the competitive scene for a while, I mean, 10th right now in Colorado in the power rankings, I think that's something to be speak for itself. You've been under pressure before. There is no doubt in my mind that you have sat here at this very stage before in tournaments and said, okay, I got to get a dub here, not only for myself, but also for my team. And that's kind of the fun part about it. So I want to see them be able to fight back. We are taking a look. I believe it is going right back to the exact same characters. No changes, no messing around. They want to send it with the best of them. And I'm excited to see how it goes. I am as well, Orbital. It's been a pleasure of a time to do the semifinals to the finals as well. And Grandview High looking to raise the trophy after all of this at the end of the day. Let's go ahead and roll into it right now without further ado. Jonathan, can they close out? Can pin? Dive deep into the tricks of the Game & Watch and see if they can fight and combat this Wario that has been very, very difficult to tackle, to try to get the assists. And right now, it doesn't seem like there's a worry in the world for Jonathan right now, although they will take the first hit right here off the bat. That first hit does feel like one that can kind of speak about the influence of the game, but uh, the resounding one is usually where I watch for. We know there's a little bit of a carry move here on, battle, uh, on Battlefield. Uh, we watch if you go from the lower corner, uh, I think Jonathan has a pretty good combination set. It's like a three-piece combo, and then you send it up to the top side on the top platform. So that 20% is really not that worrisome. It's, it's the ones that are coming closer and closer. Uh, actually, we are, seeing, uh, I, we are seeing Pan feel a little bit faster in some of these moves. Start to challenge inside of that middle ground. Even when that motorcycle comes out, you're more than willing to step into it. Of course, right now, we're looking at a 50% difference between the two as they both kind of struggle to land the next. There's the boot that you kind of want to see. Another up B to try and get that air pump going. You only get about one or two hits on it. It has never been uh, in this at least match against Jonathan. There hasn't been very many times where we've seen the bombs get usage. A lot of times, the, it's the first thing to go is some of the projectiles because you're so focused about having to go mano y mano, uh, fist to fist um, against this Wario consistently and having to worry about spacing the entire time. Sometimes it's the first to go, but you see that Pen is hanging in here using the projectiles, and that's a good sign that they're finding at least a little bit more, uh, feeling at least a little bit more comfortable in this fight. And, and, and right now you see it's pretty even as far as the damage goes but if you lose the first stock here it's gonna feel like you're chasing throughout the entirety of it look at the patience from jonathan here with the bike in hand try to oh. cause more damage but actually he's gonna catch the tail end of that though the wrong end of it here as the game and watch here pain continues now finally finds a place where they can try an edge guard where they feel the most confident where we saw it in the first uh set oh. but they catch the wrong side of a back air to, to get their first stock taken and you know what? This is a better situation than I think uh, Penn was in before. I actually really like the situation. 140 once again. And as long as you don't allow the percentage to rack up any further, I would say that's a dub. However, you do as you try and go for an up smash read. And it's not going to work as a bike comes crashing back down. Go ahead and break it up real quick. As Jonathan says, yo, let's go ahead and fire away. What a poke out, though. Down smash revved up. Not going to be allowed. Now 42% is something to be worried about. Another chip away as I think the watch is one ready to go. But a good smash is not going to finish him off. Remember, Wario so heavy. 
this little difference here is gonna be the playmaker. We see these arrow pumps are trying to do their best. 183, more than enough on the kill threat range. Smash, charged up, and I love this. That's three in a row in the middle of the battlefield. I love the fact that Pan is just like, yo, come at me. I, exactly. I was gonna point at the same thing. Good attack here too, but still the survivability of this Wario up to 195%, still no shot taken. Oh man, as many things as Penn's doing, right? You saw the up airs, but then you saw uh, not getting complacent after throwing those, but able to find some mobility on the ground too. And still, you do all the same work. And still, the survivor ability of Gloria will take two stocks before one's Jeez. even taken there. It is now stuck. Championship point here for the Super Smash Wolves. This is getting out of control. Jonathan showing why he's in the top echelon of the power rankings. And I love it every single moment. Wandering around 201. It's the final stock out. We have seen the likes of Penn be able to grab a stock back in awkward but awesome fashion. I'm going to try and do that here right now. 62, though, and kind of see Jonathan just kind of trying to change things up, going a little bit more slower pace, not chasing all the way through. But another chop, that's the second that you've used. Something vastly different than they've done before, shaking up the game plan to keep Penn on their toes. Quite honestly, this is looking at dire. A couple bombs go out. That's a nine. I think that was blocked there. Are you kidding me right now? On their toes, on the ropes now, because everything that you're throwing just will not land. Jonathan, it feels like a victory lap. At this point, we'll look out the bomb. At least going to keep them at bay, but it's still looking dire. They need to get off these ropes. They need to throw a couple of punches of their own. The shield, that defensive style. They need to get around this warrior somehow. You can't ditch the defense. And now they get a couple of good up airs here but it feels like they're just holding on at this board orbital just banking on a chance and i, and I want to see the side beats again i want to see game and watch hit a nine and i want to see that silliness come out here it would be the best thing in the world having the motorcycle making it very difficult to control that uh, ground game here Full waft ready to go. Is this how it all ends? Shield is up. You know it's coming. And you are waiting for it to happen. You're going to play the ledge as best as you can. And you made it out. Shield is ready to go. In goes that air bubble. A little bit of that fishbowl. And there's the waft that we wanted. The down smash read will finish it off. What a glorious fix we had. As that is Grandview High School to take the championship. Super Smash Wolf Wolves, uh, Super Smash Wolves Black able to get it done here. Jonathan in the hole in the fourth slot gets it done early. The Alpha, the Omega in this series for their squad. It started off right, finish it too. And everything in between felt pretty good too. As Tim was able to find a win in that one too to force it to the match point in the first place. And you let the team do the rest. You, you look to your leader in times like that. You look for some experience. And as well as they played on the other side, credit to Mountain Vista, specifically for Penn. To be able to hang in there with one of the best in Colorado was a statement piece. Uh, very much hats off to the Mountain Vista team and the Vista uh, Smash Varsity team. But just come himself a little bit short because of the pure skill and talent on the other side. Plain and simple, Grandview found a way to get it done again. I loved every single moment of it. And again, the player is all as well. Jonathan was not the only one there. RJ going ahead and taking that kind of front runner angle. And it hurts. Being the opener, it feels bad sometimes. You get into some matchups that you're just like, dang, I don't like this, but I have to play it. And it's also a read. Sometimes there's got to be a sacrifice somewhere. And RJ, I think, did it very well, even in their matchup in the grand finals against Penn, the one that took a couple socks off of Jonathan. You held up pretty dang well against the Game & Watch. So I give a lot of credit there. Everyone on Grandview did what they needed to. Yeah, and, and even, like, everybody out here was great. Even Briston, who a couple mistakes here, it's going to happen in the finals. We talked about nerves. There's a reason why we talk about it every single time. It's a real factor. If you have not been on stage... Uh, playing in front of a live environment, in front of people uh, on broadcast, different vibes. But Briston, even after the mistakes, was able to at least take one game in their set as well. So everybody really had a statement piece. Everybody worked extremely hard to get here in the first place. Coach Navaris, though, able to get Grandview High going. Jonathan able to get it done as well. Orbital, thank you so much for joining me here for the semifinals and for the finals as well of the Colorado High School Activities Association. Here are the finals. We thank Play Versus for their admin work behind the scenes. The producer and Blasky as well for doing such an incredible job uh, behind this. Actually, shorter shades, rather, for this one.
<laughs> he's gonna give me an earful for that one shredder shades <laughs> on the production thank you so much uh, for what you do as well blasky holding it down on the other channel as well sure we'll give you a shout out as well and thank you to all the parents for your incredible support with your students without you all um it won't wouldn't be done the the students uh love the support that you're able to throw here too and to all the viewers who came through and to support as well thank you all so much for tuning in we'll see you next time goodbye